The Redivus RT95 dual band 25 watt mobile ham radio, this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. What's happening everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new mobile VHF UHF radio from Redivus, the RT95. It's currently on sale on the Redivus website for $124.99 and I want to get out of the way. Redivus did contact me and ask if I'd be interested in reviewing this radio in exchange for this video. So now we've got all the legals out of the way. Having said that, let's hop over on the bench, take a look at what this radio can do. So here's everything you're going to get with the radio. Obviously you get the radio. Here's the hand mic. Uh, very functional. You can pretty much do everything with this mic. Got some up and down keys here. Here's your, uh, your keypad lock, your PTT. AB does everything. It's back backlit. We'll show you that in a minute. Your power cable, Velcro not included. I did I did put power poles on this. Of course, it just comes with a, uh, just a, a wire end. There's no no terminal on the end there. And then it's got the little T connector to uh, plug it in, like such. Then you get all your miscellaneous hardware. You get your little mounting bracket here, and these screws uh, are what screw that into the radio. There's some little rubber gaskets there to give you a little bit of friction an extra fuse and uh, it does come with two screws and washers although I have no idea where uh, the other screw went but it, it does come fully complete. Now one thing I want to mention right up right up top uh, you'll notice this says 430 to 440 megahertz. You got to unlock this uh, to get the full 70 centimeter band for the US and so let me show you how to do that. Now the unfortunate thing this is not something in the manual. I had to email Redivis to find out what to do. So with the microphone plugged in, we're going to hold down the function, the P4 button and the power button and continue to hold them in until the radio powers on. Now we can let go. We can use the knob here. You can see we're in mode one. We want to hold down the PTT. Now you can see that mode one is blue and we're going to change that to mode two. Let go of the PTT, turn the radio off and turn it back on. And now we can go into, well, wherever we want, and it'll key up. So that's how you unlock it. Taking a quick look at the front of the radio, we sat, we have uh, six different keys that are gonna allow us to do certain functions that are labeled right next to them. And if we hit this function key, you can see that those uh, menus change. So that's a really nice feature. You can actually program this radio without ever having to go into a deeper menu. It's one of the really nice things about this. Uh, obviously, we have our power button here. Here's our microphone input. And this button here is going to be basically your VFO. It's going to be your function button. Uh, you can cycle through your different frequencies here if you want to kind of tune faster, but you can, you can do that with the microphone as well. The volume is kind of weird. It's not by default this uh, knob. You have to actually hit the volume button and be on that menu to adjust the volume. That's kind of one of the things that I'm not too crazy about, but little details. The whole top is a big uh, heat sink. There is no fan on this radio. And then on the back we have our SO239 and then we have a jack for the external speaker. The radio does have two VFOs. You can see we're on 14652 on the top and 446 on the bottom. We can use the AB button to cycle between those two. It is dual watch, not a true dual receive. So if I key up with a radio, on 14652 we see it, but if I key up another radio, we're not seeing 446 until I unkey the 14652. So you can watch two uh, bands, two frequencies, whatever you want to do, but you won't be able to hear both of them simultaneously. Taking a look, if you need to go deeper into the menu, we can hold down this function button and that's going to bring us to several different menus and they all go a little bit deeper. So if we want to go in the function menu, we're going to press the VFO knob and here you can have your beep, your, your step, uh, your display, whether you want it to show in frequency or name, uh, which you can, you can actually do all that on the radio. You don't need the programming software to name channels, which is really nice. Your squelch, your volume. Um, I'm not sure what PWD is. This might be uh, direction. I don't know. Uh, but all the features and functions that you need auto auto power off. If you're going to have this in your mobile, that might be a good thing to have on. If after a, cert, a set amount of time of inactivity, the radio will power off so you don't drain your battery. Ask me how I know. <laughs> speaker, there's your main, main and headset. So the, the speaker does have 
or the, the microphone does have a speaker in it, it sounds like, so that's pretty cool. Or just the hand mic, uh, I'll put it on the main. The speaker is on the bottom of this radio, keep that in mind, it's not on the top, but this screen actually does rotate. So if you, for some reason, needed to mount it like this, you can actually rotate that screen and it'll flip it upside down, uh, which is kind of an interesting function. All your buttons will still be upside down, but your screen won't, so that's kind of neat. Uh, your timeout timer, let's see what else. Yeah, all the, all the typical fare that you would need, that's your reset, don't press that unless you wanna reset your radio. Then you can just hit P3 to go back. And then we have our channel menu. This is gonna be all of your tones and where to set up for repeaters and all that stuff. Your squelch, your, your wide, narrow band. Uh, here's your, uh, is that reverse? If you wanna to listen to the reverse on a repeater, I suppose, that might be that. Here's your offset for repeaters. So it's, it's really a pretty easy radio to use. I was able to just kind of get up and running without uh, re really even having to use the, uh, the microphone. You can change what these, uh, what these buttons do. So that's pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's pretty customizable. I mean, this thing is pretty sweet. So right now, one, like P1 is AB. We can have that for VFO memory, squelch, volume, power. Uh, that's your, uh, I'm not sure what CDT is. That might be your, uh, your continuous or digital tone coded squelch. So, and you can do that with all of these guys. So that's pretty awesome. And then hand keys, you've got PAB. Uh, C and D, so you can you can uh, decide what you want all those keys to do. So just, you know, again, just functional. DTMF menu if you need that. I don't ever need that, so it's not a big deal. And then programming is actually very, very easy on this radio, so let's show you how to do that. So first we need to make sure that we're in VFO mode, and if you're not, you can hit the VFO memory, but since there's nothing in there, we just get this little error. So I want to type in with the hand mic, I'm going to type in one, uh, one, four, six, eight, six, zero. That's my local repeater. Then we're going to hit the function button. We're going to go to the secondary menus here. I'm going to go to shift and you can see the little plus there. I want a minus offset and down here is where you can enter it. It actually comes stock as uh, like five megahertz. So we can just use the keypad and I want a 0.6 offset. Then we're gonna go over here to CDT, which is P5. And I don't want receive, I want transmit CTCSS. We're gonna push the button to turn that on, but I don't want a CTCSS, I want a DCS, as my uh, repeater uses a digital tone. We're gonna to push the button in, and you just kinda of have to scroll. We're on 631. There's no way to enter this manually on the keypad, so you just kinda of have to deal with this part and eventually you get to where you're going. Push the button again, we're good. And then we can go back to hit our function button and we should be good. Whoops, why is our shift a plus? There we are, now it's a minus. And I wanna go back to VFO memory. We're gonna long press the VFO memory button and we here we can see it's wanting to store in channel one because there's nothing there, but you can use the VFO knob to change wherever you want. You have up to 200 memories. We'll just go ahead and save it in memory one. So we'll long press the VFO memory button again, and you can see it is now saved under channel one. The one thing you need to do when you go back to VFO mode though, you'll notice the plus and all that stuff is still on. So you have to turn that off, which is um, kind of annoying. And then we'll turn off our CTCSS. Whoops, touch that again. Turn that off, hit function, and now we should just be back into regular old VFO mode. So if we go back to 146520, key up on 52, there we are. Now the cool thing about this radio is we can actually name this without the programming software. So we're gonna long press the function button. We're gonna go to channel menu, and I think it's uh, 11, where it says name set. We're gonna push the VFO knob, and we're going to just turn this. So it's, this is the Huntsville repeater, so I'm on H, push the button. It goes to the next one, and I'll just put a V, I, L, L, E. And we can back out of there. And I think it was under function menu where you saw display. We can change that to channel or name, push the function button, then go back. And there you now have Huntsville. I like to keep mine as names. I, I never remember the frequencies. So that's really cool. It took all of, I don't know, a minute to do that. So really cool. 
So now let's see how the radio sounds. Uh, in order to change the volume, we're gonna hit P6 and that will change this VFO now into a volume knob. The max volume is 36 and then it goes back down to one. So let's bring it back down to like 30, say, and see how this sounds. This is KNMRD testing the receive audio of the Redivus RT95. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Check two, check two, sibilance, sibilance. Now for our final test, this radio is advertised at 25 watts, so let's key up on 14652, see what we get. Uh, almost 23 there, and let's go over to 70 centimeters, key up on 446, and we've got about uh, 18 and a half watts there. So a little shy on two meters and uh, quite a bit shy on 70 centimeters. That's kind of typical for these Chinese radios but uh, it honestly isn't gonna make a lick of difference between 22 and 25 watts or even 18 and 25 watts. It's, it's pretty much gonna do the thing for you. So what do I think of this radio? Well, overall, I think it's a pretty okay radio. I like the screen, it's, it's bright enough. I've not had any problems reading it. I mean, it's, it is small, but it's, it's not hard for me to read anyways. Uh, I like that it's really easy to program. It doesn't come with a programming cable, which is unfortunate, but all the things you need are literally right there on the front panel, so you can program it either via the front panel or the hand mic, which is really nice. Seems to have a decent enough speaker, so if you're driving down the road, you got the windows open, you should still be able to hear the radio, which is always a good thing, especially for me. I am pretty much always have the windows open, so it's important for me to have a loud speaker. The size is nice, it's not a very big radio, so you could either mount this somewhere in your car, you could even put this like in a go box or something, if you're making like a go kit, have a little 25 watt radio, that would be a good thing to, to use this radio for. A couple of the things I don't particularly like about the radio, one, when we were doing that audio test, you could kind of hear there was a little bit of a, an audible whine, so it's not the greatest quality audio, certainly not a deal breaker, but I did notice it was there, it was kind of annoying. And the other thing, is actually this hand mic. I do not like the form factor of this hand mic for one reason. These buttons right here on the side. These are used if you wanna change channels up and down or they, they do a couple different things. If you're in VFO mode, it'll, it'll go up and down in the VFO. But I find it's in the perfect place where if I wanna push one of these buttons, I'm also gonna push the PTT. It's just the, the way you hold a mic, so if I'm pushing this, I'm also pushing the PTT. It's just, it's a weird design. Uh, you know, they could easily put these buttons somewhere on the front maybe, but I understand you do have a speaker there, but just my thing. So I always keep this, this uh, locked so I don't accidentally uh, push these buttons and push the PTT. That's kind of my thing. But other than that, I think it's a pretty decent radio. I will leave a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can go over to patreon.com slash KMRD radio stuff. You can also follow me on Twitter. And until next time, we will see you again on another episode of KMRD radio stuff. 73 guys.